So I'm going to form a matrix problem to find C1 and C2. You can see, obviously, C2 is 10 immediately from this first equation, but I'm, I insist on applying the same algorithm despite its usefulness. So I'll form a matrix problem to solve this. Generally, it'll be, more eas it'll be easier, maybe not for this one. Um, and so here's the matrix problem to solve C1 and C2, right? That the, this is the first column. That's the second column. There are the unknowns, C1, C2. They equal that. If you solve that problem, which is very easy, you'll find the constants are minus 10 and 10. Okay? And so now you can plug in those two solutions into the equation. There's minus 10. There's plus 10. And then you can multiply this out. So that's the solution for CA and that's the solution for CB. So if you, real quick, if you were to plot these two solutions. So anytime we do a problem like this and it's physically based, you want to look at the solution, see if the solution makes any sense, right? So you can see the solution here for CA as a function of time. At t equals 0, it's going to be 10. That's good because that's what, that's what it has to be because that's the initial condition. If your equations don't satisfy the initial conditions, then you made a mistake. Right? Then it says it's going to decrease exponentially. It's going to look like this. It's going to go to 0. Makes sense because A reacts to B and you don't supply any A, so eventually it's going to all leak. It's going to all be consumed. If you plot CB, maybe this isn't so easy to see. But if you look at this equation, you plug in t equals 0, you'll find it starts at 0. And that's where it should start. Because that's where you said it should start. That's your initial condition. It's whoops, specified right there, right? And so I think if you plotted this solution, you'd find, so this solution causes CB to go up, right? And this one causes CB to go down. Um, but I think you'd find, in fact, I know you'll find that it'll, do, it'll go like this. It'll go up temporarily, and then it'll come back down and go like that, OK? Because right, it, first thing that happens is this is really not a, course in reaction engineering, but, right, so first of all, you produce B from A, and then eventually the rate at which B is produced from here is, is, is not as great as the rate at which it's consumed, then it starts to drop back down, then it looks like that. So I guess what I'm encouraging you to do is when you find a solution, you should at least look at the solution, make sure it satisfies the, the initial conditions of the problem, and make sure that it physically makes sense. Like what if I had a solution that said 10e to the plus t? then I predict A will go off to infinity and increase forever. You probably made a mistake, <laughs> okay? So at least look at the solution and see. Okay, so I will see you tomorrow.